and now we will see an uh, example for uh, wall footing design uh, some data is given what is that the dead load on this uh, wall it is a wall footing so this will be wall and it will be continuous wall so dead load 21 keep per feet live load 20 keep per feet and the wall size or wall thickness is a 14 inch and the um, the bottom of the foundation will be 48 inch from the uh, surface and allowable soil pressure that means the amount of soil um, amount of soil pressure that can be applied by the soil is 400 psa pound per square feet and whatever the concrete we are using the strength is 4000 psi the steel we will use here is 60000 psi so that is the given data now when we will design um, so what does wall footing design means design means like we should find a, a a size of this what is what is the size of this the thickness of this what is the width of this that means uh, here to here what is the witness that we need to determine and also the reinforcement here reinforcement like this way one is this way that will be our main reinforcement other will be the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement that will be that way so this way that is temperature and shrinkage so that is our target Okay, so what I did here, I already solved this problem because it has so many calculations. If I want to do here, it will take time. So what is our first step? First step, we will assume the thickness. Design is always like, like that, that we will assume a thickness and we, then we will check it. So first, um, uh, step number one, uh, assume a thickness. So here I assumed, um, um, uh, 21 is so I assume it is 21 in the total thickness is 21 is uh, that means my D D is 21 minus 3.5 is is 16 point 16 or 17 17 17.5 is now what is 3.5 is uh, that is like uh, the um, from here to here if I provide 3.5 inch, then it will make sure that I have at least 3 inch of uh, clear cover. Foundation is under the soil, so we should provide at least 3 inch clear cover. And other 5 inch from center of the bar, like the diameter of the bar. So now, if my bar diameter is more, th more than 1 inch, then I will not have 3 inch clear, clear cover. But that should be okay. This three three inch clear cover is just recommended. It's not sharp value. Slight changes may not uh, change your um, design or your, your structure will not collapse for that. That is just a guidelines. Okay. Then what we'll do? Step number two. No, in this step number one, we will do say allowable soil pressure. What we will do? We will find the effective soil pressure. Effective. So if I write here effective here, or is short we call Q E effective. What is that? So my soil is applying pressure this way. My foundation will, will apply pressure downward. Same thing about my um, my soil here. So I have soil here that will also apply some pressure. So some pressure will be like a, um, balanced. So that's called effective. So what is that? 4000 minus this pressure so my soil can apply 4000 psf minus what is minus minus is the weight of the slab and the weight of the soil so slab i assume how much uh, 21 is so what i am doing here 21 divided by 12 it is feet feet and the what is the unit weight of unit uh, of concrete typically 150 so 150 is a good number for unit weight of concrete pound per feet cube. So this PSA, PSA is the load of the concrete. Then what about the soil? So how, uh, uh, if it is 21 inch, this should be uh, 27 inch, right? 21, 27 equals 48. So 20. 
7 inch of soil divided by 12 is food. What is the soil weight? I assume they are 100. 100 pound per feet cube. This is a good number to assume. The unit weight of soil, it changes from 90 to if it is compacted soil 90 to 120 if it is like a aggregate if, if it has some aggregate it will be 130 35 like that so 100 is a good approximate for the fill material here then what is that my soil is applying and my load is uh, balancing some so that is my effective and how much i got here 3512 psa that is the effective pressure okay in the next uh, we will do uh, what will be the weight weight required weight means this distance here to here how much now which required the size of the foundation is based on service load something to remember when we determine the size of the footing we do not take the factor load then my size becomes so huge so what do we do we use the service load so um, say so which is a uh, which record will be so dead load plus live load there's no factor divided by q e effective so what is my uh, dead load dead load was 21 keep per feet live load was 20 keep per feet divided by q e q e is 3.512 keep per feet square so keep per feet divided by keep per feet is square. So I will get a feet. So after this calculation, I got uh, 11.67 feet. 11.67 feet. Uh, I can choose 11 feet. Sorry, 11 feet and then 9 inches. That means 11.75 feet. I need 11.67 feet. I am providing 11.75 feet. It's good. So I can provide more. I cannot provide less. So 11 feet 9 inches is a good number. What I selected here. Now somebody might select 12 feet to be safe. Yes, good. If you have land, because if your wall is close to the boundary line, you might not have this amount of space available. So that is something to. Uh, consider also wall foundations are not same depending on the area boundary uh, many things in this case okay so the my size is done we will choose this in next so okay, again the size depends on service load but when we, we will design the reinforcement we will take the factor load so now we are going to the factor load Then what is our uh, factor load? Step number three is factor load. We call Q U. U means ultimate. Q means load. So it is factor load divided by my width. That means 1.2 d, 1.6 l. Width is 11.75 uh, feet. So 1.2 d, d is 21 keep per feet, 1.6 l, 20 keep per feet, and width is 11.5 feet. Answer is coming 4.868 keep per feet. You can see keep per feet, keep per feet by feet, it should be feet square but why we are taking keep per feet because when we design the uh, design the wall footing we are taking a one feet strip that means if this is my wall this is my foundation it is going that way going this way it's going this way this way so what we are doing we are taking a one feet strip here here yeah. one feet is strip so this is why i am not writing foot square i am writing 4.868 feet 
keep one feet because I am considering only one feet strip, one feet. Whatever we will get the reinforcement, we will copy paste. That is the easiest because I do not know the length of this. It might be 20, 30, 50 feet. So I am taking only one feet strip. Okay, so we got our load. Now we will start our designing. Designing, now, you can see that. If, if I twist it, it is actually a beam. It is actually a beam with load like this. So you can consider where my load is, 4.868 keep per feet. So we can consider it as a beam. We are just seeing it inverse way. So what we will design now? We will check the shear shear force, and then we will design the reinforcement. Shear force. If I do shear force, where shear force is critical, we learn that shear force is critical at d distance from the phase. So this is the phase at d distance from here. Now at d distance, what is my shear force? Simply. If this length is say L, my shear force here will be uh, VU will be uh, QU, QU times L. That will be my shear force. Now I have to find L. What is my L? Okay, so L will be total divided by 2. Then we will come at the middle. My total width is 11.5 feet divided by 2. So we are at the middle. Then deduct the half of the column. Column is how much? Fif mm, se uh, seven, sorry, uh, se uh, 14 inches. 14 inches divided by 2, then divided by 12. The whole will be feet now. Half of the column. Then I will deduct my D. What is my D? D was 17.5 inches divided by 12, it will be feet. So that is my L. That means entire divided by 2, I will come at the middle, then deduct this half of the wall, deduct half of the D, I will find my L. Let me check what I did here, exactly 17.5 by 2, 14 by 2, 12, correct, 17.5 by 2, correct, and that is my L. So my share force will be, oh, how, how much did I get here? Mm, I did not calculate, I calculate combine, okay, that means... 4.868 times whatever I am getting here. So finally, I am getting 18.66 keep. I keep this value, keep per feet, times L, feet. So keep. So my share force is 18.66 keep at D distance from the face. Now, is this share force good for me or no? That I will do now. Okay, so we are doing a number four actually. So this is the part of number four, finding shear force. Now, in foundation, we do not provide any time. So my concrete will take all the shear force. Now, how much concrete can take? If you can remember, concrete can take uh, uh, this amount of shear force. Two pi uh, A prime C, say P here, uh, P D, this amount of Share force. So if I change my side, my D required will be whatever my share force is. So whatever my share force is, uh, this divided by two lambda p a prime c b. So what is my share force? Eighteen point six six times thousand pound two. Lambda is lightweight factor if I use lightweight concrete. So we are using normal concrete. So lambda is 1 and my P for share with soil chapter 8 is 0.75. A prime C is 4000 because it is given. My B was 12 beans because we assume a 1 feet strip if you can remember. Then what is my D required? It comes 16.4 means how much I am uh, I am my provided D is 17.5 inches so I am providing 17.5 inches so my D is okay 
Now here something to twist. If it is not okay, you have to go back to original and assume a larger depth. I assume 21, you can assume now 24, 5, if it is not okay. Now, I provided 17, I need only 8, say. That means I am designing, like I am do, doing an over design. I will go back to original, at the initial, and I will decrease my depth. So here you will play. Now this portion is important because here you will play whether you need to go back at the initial age and revise it or no. For my case, 16, 17, very close. Is I will say is okay. Okay, so um, design per share is done. How we assume a depth, we calculate load, calculate size, calculate share force, then check it if it is. Uh, if the requirement is less, that means I'm good. So share force design is done. Then we will do, um, we will do reinforcement. Reinforcement or flexural design. So is or is still design. So now we will do reinforcement or bending, bending moment. So where is our beam? Our beam is here. It is not actually beam, but we can consider it is a beam. So load is 4.868 keep per feet. Now, where moment is critical? Moment is critical at the face here. So I need to find my moment here. So cut here. Okay, if I cut here, so what is my moment here? So if this distance is say x, my load here will be q u times x q u is this x is this distance x then my moment will be so m will be q u x times half of the, half of my x this portion is x by 2 so x by 2 so q u x square by 2 that is the moment or if you can remember for cantilever beam for cantilever beam, if this is W, if this is L, your maximum moment here is W L square by 2. Same thing we are doing here. Here our W is QU. So you can solve it or you can memorize it or you can see the manual. So before that class you took statics class, uh, strength the material class. Mm, it's structural analysis class in those classes you know how to find moment but i am giving here is moment is this okay then then what is my x that means what is this distance is it difficult no 17.575 divided by 2 if i do it i'll come at the middle minus my half of the column half of the column divided by 112 that is my x Okay, so make free space here so that you do not get confused. That is my x. And this portion I did not, did I calculate? Yes, I calculated and I got 5.29 feet. Okay, then find the moment 4.868 keep per feet, 5.29 feet square divided by 2. two my total moment is 68.16 keep fit so that is my moment so i know my moment i know the width of my beam that is that means that way because i assume 12 feet is strip i know my d so when you know your moment when you know the size what to do i will erase this because i need some space just i need the moment you did this part earlier so we will determine this because we know this 68.16 this is in when we use a table we use pound is uh, unit so we'll multiply by 12 to make it inch times thousand so this will be pound inch divided by p is 0.9 b is 12 d is 17.5 in c square 
What is the value I got? I got 247.3 PSI. Okay, then what we will do? If I find this, then I will go to table A13. For this value, what is our row? So go to that table appendix A13 for this value. What is the row? I found row is 0 0.0043. Now we should check this row. Is it more than the minimum? Yes. So uh, if you go to table uh, A7, you will find row minimum is 0 0.00. If I can. 1.0033 I think and what is the row max row max means for uh, tensile strain 0 0.005 it is noted here 0 0.0181 so my row is in between these two that means it's good okay now what I will do I will simply find my reinforcement row b d if i do that this is my row 0 0.0043 b is 12 d is 17.5 i got 0 0.903 in square now in foundation sometimes reinforcement is very small because the size is so big we consider the size based on the shear force so as the size is big my reinforcement is very small 0 0.903 inch square per feet so that means if this is my foundation this reinforcement i need this amount but when i did the calculation i just took 12 means strip so whatever i am providing in 12 means i'll copy paste so i need this amount so if you go to your um, appendix uh, a6 i think appendix a6 let me check with your book Yes, appendix A6, if you go there, that means uh, if I use number 7 bar at the rate of 7.5 inch center to center, or I can use number 6 bar at the rate of 5.5 inch center to center. So I have these two options, if I provide this, that is very close to this. So I selected this on here. If I provide this, I am providing how much? 0.96 inch square which is very close to my requirement so it's good is so i will provide this and if i provide this you know that we need to check the minimum spacing sorry minimum clear space or maximum space what is the minimum spacing minimum spacing is one inch or bar diameter so bar diameter is six by eight inch my space is more than this so okay minimum space okay what is the maximum spacing if you can remember it is 3 a's or 18 is 3 a's means our ace is 21 is 3 a's means 63 is or 18 is our spacing is 5 good we are less than the max okay so we found out that this bar is uh, number 6 at the rate of 5.5 in center to center so we got our main uh, reinforcement now what to do now we need to design the temperature reinforcement that will go that way so temperature reinforcement that will go that way so this time also we will consider a uh, 12 beans strip whatever we will get in 12 beans we will copy paste this way so what is the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement ratio for 60 KSI? In chapter 5, we saw that for 60 grade steel, the ratio is 0 0.0018. If I can remember, let me say, uh, yes. 
for 40 or 50 grade steel it is 0 0.002 okay so what is my reinforcement t and s temperature and shrinkage rho b is now temperature reinforcement based on entire depth because entire depth will contract or expand contract or expand so 0 0.0018 b is 12 a is 21 then i got 0.45 in square per feet because i assumed b is 12 if we assume b is entire whole thing we'll get whole at a time okay from table again from table a6 i found that if i use number 5 bar at the rate of 18 center to center i am providing only 0.46 inch square so perfect if i use number 5 at 18 so then i can say that this reinforcement is number 5 at the rate of 18 center to center so hopefully you understood how to design for thickness for shear, how to design the main reinforcement for bending, how to design the temperature reinforcement. Very simple. It's just a beam. Just if I twist uh, inverse up or down. There is something else. Uh, we did not cover it so far. In next chapter we will cover it. What that is. So this is the point where my moment is max, where my moment is max. That means this reinforcement I actually need at this point. So from the maximum point, my length should be at least equal to the development length. So there is another chapter where we will discuss it. Now I am not doing it uh, uh, because it will be so big and also uh, it's like separate discussion so we should take we should calculate the value of ld that means the development length needed development length means the amount of length i need to develop the bonding so that it can take uh, my maximum moment so i must have that amount of space now if we calculate the development length and you found the space is not good then what you will do you will do you can do hook 90 degree hook or even you can do 180 degree hook if the if you do not have sufficient length still the if you do not have it you can change your bar take a lower size bar a smaller bar then it might be okay even though if it is not okay you have to go back and increase your depth but in most cases it will be okay just as a sake so we will uh, do that in the uh, in that sector or next time now our design is mostly done now just uh, show everything clearly that this is 48 inch this portion is 21 inch and here to here is 27 inch here to here is 11.75 feet yes this way and this is 14 inch show clearly so in this way you have to show everything clearly so hopefully you understood how to design um, roll footing now other footing like square footing rectangular footing very similar there's something small small change we will do when we will uh, we will see when we will do the designing now i do not want to make the video longer uh, you can read your book uh, you can see the example and in the next video, I will also solve more problem. Thank you.